brothers and sisters, this is an unprecedented time in our church's history, in the faith history of the church around the world. One of the things I know that we long for is the understanding that Christ accompanies us during this time of confusion and struggle and pain and grief, hurt and sorrow. We can be sure of that because that has been his promise. And one of the ways in which we can reflect that faith and that assurance is now to walk the way of the cross with him, the way that he walked towards the resurrection, the new horizon of new and more abundant life. So I invite you today to come with Father Gabe and I as we journey the way of the cross, assured that Christ accompanies us. And at this first station, we reflect that Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by, by your, your holy, holy cross, cross you, have you have redeemed, redeemed the, world. the world. Though the Lord stands innocent, they find him guilty. Jesus Christ the only one with the true power to condemn humanity has now been condemned by it. Standing bloodied and broken, the Lord refuses to defend himself. He speaks only when necessary, offering truths to any hearts open to receiving it. Pilate, confused by the man in his presence, gives in to the mob who demands Jesus be crucified. The true criminal is released as the Lord, the giver of life, is sentenced to die. The decision has been made and the road to Calvary awaits Jesus. Public passion for your faith often brings condemnation from a self-centered world. Anytime you share God's truth with conviction, you run the risk of being convicted for it. Maybe it's your cross or your t-shirt that draws people's criticism. Perhaps your opposition to abortion has made you the target of others' aggression. You may not suffer physically as our Lord did, but you will likely feel the sting of mockery, gossip, and even betrayal as Jesus felt. Standing with Christ often brings loneliness. Times in which you see who your true friends are and are not. But remember Jesus' promise. Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Our second station, Jesus is given his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because, because by, by your, your holy, holy cross, cross you, have you have redeemed the world. The journey that began in a lonely garden has now thrust Jesus into the overcrowded streets. 
Thousands of people in town for Passover watch as the convicted man marches to his death. He had told his disciples of the suffering that awaited him, and Jesus now bears the weight of that cross upon himself. The splintered crossbeam digs into his shoulders. The wood is stained with the blood of the Lamb. Though his suffering would bring life, his walk was one of death. Jesus embraces more than the physical pain in this torment. With each step forward, Christ takes on our sins. He takes our death sentence as his own. God alone knows your most intimate fears and struggles. Only the Lord fully understands the pains or fears you carry deep within. Only Christ knows the full weight of the cross you carry each day. Some crosses appear smaller than others, but everyone has a cross that they carry. Even God carried a cross, and his cross included yours. Jesus knows the deepest longings of your heart and the greatest burdens that you shoulder. So let's go to Jesus with our struggles now. Let's invite invite Jesus into your own struggle. Pray to him. You are not journeying alone. Prayer is where the cross changes, changes shoulders. At the third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because because by by your your holy cross cross you have have redeemed redeemed the world. Betrayed and beaten, dehydrated and dying, his legs give out. His body succumbs to intense fatigue. Jesus' back is shredded, and his limbs are weary from the beatings that had begun hours earlier. Though fully divine, Christ's humanity is clearly seen in this moment as he falls to his knees. Every exhale reveals our Lord's exhaustion. Every inhale sends shock waves of pain throughout his body. Do you ever feel like people are waiting for you to fall? Does it feel like they are almost rejoicing in it when you do? Do you feel like your life is on public display because of how you try to live out your faith? You might be feeling tired on your faith walk. At times, you might feel abandoned by your closest friends. It might seem like it's just you against the world. No matter how hard you try, the odds seem to be stacked against you. You feel weak. Take a deep breath and keep moving forward. Breathe in the spirit through your unwavering and humble example, all who see you will see Christ in you. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have have redeemed redeemed the world. 
The only pain more intense than Jesus' own physical suffering must have been seeing the effect it had on his mother, our mother. How badly Mary must want to take his place. The deep love of the mother for her only son reveals something about the father's love as well. The prophecy of Mary's own suffering unfolded right before her tear-filled eyes, and still Mary trusts. Mary believed that God would bring joy through the sadness. Mary's gentleness brings Jesus temporary relief from the pain, but it could not save him, for he had not yet saved us. Have you ever seen a family member go through intense pain but, but unable to help them? If so, you've peered into the heart of your blessed Mother Mary. Have you ever questioned God's plan when you witnessed somebody in great pain? If so, ask Mary to pray with you, to reach out to you as she did to Jesus along the way. Mary's intercession will help you to grow in trust. Just as your own mother came to your aid in your weakness and sickness as a child, Mother Mary will always rush to your side in moments of personal pain or hardship. Like Jesus, you too are Mary's child. She's there to pray with you now and at the hour of your death, just as she was with the Lord. At the fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by, by your, your holy, holy cross, cross you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. As Jesus grows increasingly tired, a man named Simon is pulled from the crowd and pressed into service. Does he understand that the cross he is now carrying plays a part in his own salvation? Simon the Cyrenian looks into the eyes of mercy and shows compassion in return. The two continue down the road together. Simon's strength eases some of our Lord's burden, but only to a degree. Only one man can carry the full weight the full burden of sin, and his name is Jesus Christ. God does not want you to fail. God hears your cries. God sees your struggles. God is proactively working for your salvation even when you are not. Just as God sent his Son to do what we could not, God still sends people into your life, people you don't even know, to help you along your way. Some whom God sends will walk with you for a lifetime and others for only a short time. But all are important and all are gifts from your heavenly Father. Look around your life for those whom God has sent to help you on your walk, to lighten your load, and to offer strength to you when you need it most. Be sure to thank those souls and to thank God for them.
our sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, cross you, have you have redeemed, redeemed the world. Sacred blood runs down the Savior's face. Sweat drips into his swollen eyes as he sees a figure moving slowly toward him. A woman named Veronica extends more than a cloth to her Lord. Veronica offers a compassionate heart to a passionate soul. This daughter of God offers her hands and her towel in service of the wounded son. No gesture of love, no act of charity, however small, is forgotten in the kingdom of God. It's so easy to get jaded by the world. We all go through times of loneliness, wondering how many people really care, how many only think of themselves. It's easy to feel like it's you against the world. Wipe away the tears, though, and you'll see people who do care. Even small acts of charity and kindness can be huge graces from God as we carry our cross each day. The same way that selfishness alienates us, acts of selflessness brings us into community, offers us hope, keeps us going. A kind smile, a kind word, or an affirming call or text, any of these can bring relief to souls who need it. All these actions wipe the face of Jesus, hidden beneath all those faces around you. Can the human heart refrain from partaking in her pain? In that mother's pain untold. At this seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The crowds pressed against him as Jesus makes his way through the narrow city streets. His open wounds caught to the wood of the cross. His sacred heart races. His blood pressure drops and Jesus falls once again. How easy it would be to give up, but he did not do so. Overwhelmed not by pain, but by love, the Father's love for us, Jesus presses on. He slowly rises, for he knows his walk is not yet done. Jesus fell. He knew well the battle between the flesh and the spirit. He agonized in the garden. He cried and he bled and now he falls again. You will fall too. Most times when you fall though, it's because of sin. You choose self over others. You run into sin, and because of it, suffering follows. Even when you run away from Jesus, however, he doesn't run away from you. He runs after you. He can transform your pain into joy. He will turn your death into life. Reconcile with Jesus. Don't stay on the ground, weighed down by the weight of your sins. Look to Jesus, and he'll give you grace to stand and move forward. Remember, the saints are the sinners who fell down and got back up.
our eighth station, Jesus meets the woman of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Sound of crying could be heard over the taunts and the jeers. It was a wailing so passionate that it caught our Lord's attention, even in the midst of his own agony. Jesus' eyes scanned the onlookers and spotted a group of women weeping for him. And now Christ, the suffering servant, would reach out to ease other sufferings yet again. Jesus says, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves. He consoles them, yet challenges them to see beyond just this moment. Jesus Christ was on a mission. Love is always on a mission. So suffering doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. He does. When you faithfully suffer through the sickness or other pains beyond your control, it bears witness to others of your unshakable love for God. Suffering broadens your perspective. Suffering helps you grow in compassion, and gratitude, and dependence on God, your loving Father. So whether you are the one in pain or are looking upon someone else in pain, trust that God has an unseen plan, one that will ultimately lead you and everyone closer to him. St. Augustine said once, God had one son on earth without sin, but never one without suffering. the ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Exhaustion builds. His lungs are failing. The temple that he would raise in three days, the temple of his body, has now fallen a third time. His knees are bloodied from the previous falls. His legs are almost lifeless. The weight of the cross grows heavier, and another step seems impossible. He rises from the ground one last time, reminding us that perfect love endures all things. Everyone wants to quit at some point in their life. Maybe you're exhausted. Maybe you've tried and tried and nothing has changed. Maybe you've lost your joy and you've begun to lose your hope. It'd be easier to just give up, you think to yourself. You're already down and you don't think you can fall any further. Falling is human. Rising is divine. It's natural to want to stop, but it's supernatural. It's by God's grace that you can keep going. It's when you've been knocked down and feel you've hit your limit that you look to Jesus once again. Let his breath, his spirit, fill your lungs let his grace fill your body and strengthen your legs to get up and walk again. It's when you just can't move any further that you realize you aren't moving, but Christ is moving within you.
our tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by, by your holy, holy cross, cross you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. The wo- The walk has ended, but the mockery has not. Jesus is now stripped of his last earthly possession, his clothing, exposed for all to see. His wounds are clearly visible now, as are the fruits of our sins, cruelty of man and the presence of evil. The shame of Adam's nakedness bore witness to his sin. But the shame of Christ's nakedness bears witness to our sin. Onlookers stare, and soldiers gamble as Jesus awaits the final insult. Evil moves in big and small ways in this world. God humbles, but the devil humiliates. Have you ever been abused, or have ever been the victim of great injustice? Jesus was. And although he had all power and majesty and could could have taken vengeance on everyone who wronged him, he did not. God was mocked for you. He responded to insults with silence. He returned abuse with forgiveness. Whether the assaults against him were great or small, his response remained the same, love. You might experience great attacks against your dignity in this lifetime. You might be tempted to attack others' dignity along the way. The way of Christ, however, is the way of love. So ask yourself, am I like Jesus right now? Or am I one of the soldiers publicly stripping another of their dignity? The answer often changes not only your day, but also another's life. the 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because because by by your your holy holy cross, cross, you you have have redeemed redeemed the the world. The time has come. Shouts of pain echo as hammers strike nails. Roman soldiers were experts in torture and efficient in execution. Nails tear through sacred flesh, and the blood that won our salvation flows out. As the cross is lifted high for all to see, his body buckles under the weight and the stress. As he speaks words of love, compassion, and forgiveness, we see that he is not some criminal or mere teacher or prophet. He is God, and he is dying on a cross for us. Christ could have called on angels to save him. Christ could have gotten off the cross, but he chose not to. He chose to save himself. He chose to save you instead of himself. The fact that our God was crucified shows that you can trust him. He didn't choose the easy way out. He chose you. If he would have freed himself or chosen not to suffer, how would you be able to really trust him the next time you were in pain? When Jesus allowed himself to be nailed to the wood, 
He was sending you a message. He was reminding you that there's no pain you endure that he cannot understand. Christ was showing you how far he is willing to go to save you. He was proving to you that God would rather die than risk spending eternity without you. The sound of the hammer on the nails is the sound of our God who loves you and I to death. station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by, by your, your holy cross, cross you, you have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. Let's pause in silence for a moment. The skies have grown dark. Rain falls. The earth quakes. Creation reacts to the loss of its creator. Evil laughs as the transfigured one now hangs lifeless and disfigured. The angels remain silent. The Lord let himself be destroyed. No more words. No more miracles. Christ does nothing to save himself yet offers everything to save us. It is finished. So when Jesus breathed his last breath, his enemies thought that it was finally over. They were wrong. The work of salvation was not over. The stronghold of sin was over. Sin, not God, was being destroyed. Jesus did what we could never do. He paid our debt. His sacrifice makes us worthy of heaven. It's not about our works. It's about how many prayers we prayed or how many scripture pages we... It's not about how many prayers we pray or how many pages of scriptures we read. It's not about how many acts of charities we perform or how many masses we attend. We cannot earn our salvation. Our salvation is a gift. The cross and the sacraments are an invitation to live forever with God. And all you do is for God. All the prayers and acts of service, all those Sundays at Mass, they're all a response of his love and to his invitation to eternal life. Christ laid down his life for you. He did what you cannot do, but there is still much more you can do. He died so that you might live. So live in a way that will help others to know Christ and the fullness of life he offers. Let me share. At the thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by, by your, your holy, holy cross, cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. The sun begins to set. Only a few people remain at the scene. Out of reverence, permission is granted to remove the lifeless body from the blood-covered tree. The body that was taken is now given and received. A man named Joseph 
holds Jesus in his arms. Mary reaches to swaddle her son. The scene is familiar, but drastically different than Christmas morning. How would God use such a death to bring life? That Friday night was a celebration for sin. The enemy had seemingly won. The Lord's body was broken. Most of his followers had turned their backs, but the cross remained, a visible example of defeat at the hands of a selfish culture. Perhaps you've experienced Friday nights filled with loneliness or pain. Maybe you've seen people turn their backs or deny Christ on a Friday night to better fit in with those around them. You might wonder if you're the only one left who cares. You might question if the joy will ever return or if the sense of loneliness you feel will ever be filled. Give it time. Sometimes it takes more than one sunrise for hope to return. Sometimes it just takes time for love to breathe again. Our 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your your holy cross cross you have have redeemed redeemed the world. All is quiet now. The Corpus Christi, the body of Christ, has been laid inside the rock-hewn tomb. Burial cloths enwrap him. Incense covers him. A cave now holds the Lord we no longer could. The stone is moved over the entrance. Darkness fills the tomb, our hearts in the world. Faith is shaken. Love has died, but hope has not. Christ's body was prepared and placed in a tomb set apart by itself. The tomb was silent as creation waited for the Creator's heart to beat again. To be holy means to be set apart. Sometimes God has, sometimes God has to remove you from your surroundings. At times, God might move you away from certain friends or even from loved ones to prepare you. You might be set apart at different stages of your life in order to grow in holiness. These are times of preparation for your greater mission in the kingdom. Embrace such time of physical or spiritual solitude as gifts. Seasons of silence offer opportunities for quiet reflection that don't often, very often come in this culture. Trust that if God sets you apart in a spiritual tomb for a period of time, Trust that he has great plans for you. Christ's tomb is not just a place of death. It is also the site of the resurrection. New life begins here. So Lord God, thank you for choosing to die for our sins so that we might have eternal life. As difficult as it is to remember these things that happened to you, We know that Easter is awaiting us at the end of this season of Lent. Thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. Amen. 